I know this was unexpected. I play something else other than Final Fantasy VII. Well, I just recently got into Final Fantasy XV, and after all the DLCs is out, I absolutely enjoyed the game way better than I thought it was based on the reviews and stuff, but I should have known not to trust people's reviews because I love Square Enix anyway, you know what I mean? It's one of those games where it starts off not as fun, and then it gets ridiculously fun later on. It takes a lot of grinding and leveling up, which is why people probably were hating on it in the first place, but that's a whole different matter. But before I get go any farther, shout out to those that have donated to the channel. Thank you a lot. One thing I like about the Final Fantasy game is the anime elements. Feels like you're playing an actual anime, but high quality anime. You know what I mean? That's what I like. This being known as Noctis is what you would call the chosen one of this universe. Main characters are, right? Other characters in this verse are strong too, which is important to figure out how strong he actually is. Magic does exist in this universe. He is the heir to the throne of this universe. And there's this special rule of this universe that if you're heir to the throne, you get these special abilities like being able to wield certain weapons or rings to make you top tier in the universe and this universe does have deities and he's even up there with the deities but i'm getting into all that in a second you probably noticed in this image you see like floating weapons around him that's one of his many abilities he can like literally summon weapons and it's not a game mechanic it's a part of his lore that's one of the things you can do in this game other characters can summon weapons as well like his teammates and stuff like that i have to admit that weapons is a vital part to his character it's basically an extension of him so if you see me using a weapon to determine his strength that's basically his standard gear because he can literally summon it so it's like a part of him like how wolverine gear is a part of him permanently in marvel you know stuff like that he trains with his teammates from time to time, like Gladios, to help hone his skills even more. They got like a really cool relationship, things like that. Like I said before, his teammates are a beast, but he's special. He can wield these certain weapons that only the king, the heir to the throne, can hold. These things known as royal arms. Kind of the same thing with the Ring of Luces. You know what I mean? He has a totally big arsenal of weapons. He fought different type of creatures, countering their attacks with the weapons in the process. Just epic things you can just notice, right? And he can even do f elemental spells like Fire, Faraga, countering that so. Doesn't really matter how big they are, get Merc with the spell. Some of these creatures look like near one story building size, if that makes any sense. Special weapons like this samurai looking demon. Yeah, this world has demons, it's infected. Yep, creatures this big. You get an idea of his power, fighting different creatures in the universe. Giant mechs countering that way, showing his agility in the process. Check out that counter, jumps over it, maneuverability, counters this creature. They went on many adventures together. Being able to fight other swordsmen that are pretty skilled, even these demon swordsmen. Epic. Some of these creatures are so big, it's hard to even notice that you can just parry anything pretty much. Just humongous creatures. Even mountain-sized things. Summon his weapons at will, as you can see. What is team? Get an idea of the lore and right intent they want him to be at. I mean, look. hes They're fighting a literal mountain. And their attacks actually hurt it. This is like a reoccurring villain in Final Fantasy. Battle feat. In the lore, the writer intent, this thing knows the power of the kings, the different royal arms in the game. He goes through a big deal of character progression in this game. The beginning of the game, he's at his weakest. The end of the game, he's at his strongest. Throughout the game, he gets stronger as time goes by, which is impressive with what I'm about to tell you, considering what he does relatively early in the game with these royal arms he does acquire. When I say he actually, he can literally summon it, when he gets a new weapon, it literally appears that it goes inside of him. Like it, the way they animate it, they actually make it look like that. Yeah, that's how they literally animate it. One of his coolest abilities and gameplay mechanics is this thing known as the Warp Strike, and it is a part of the lore that it is a technique where he literally warps at the speed of light right here in the lore. And when you watch the move in action, it doesn't seem like nothing contradicts it. Like when you see it, it literally teleports him instantly to where he throws the knife. It seems to be limited by the distance it is thrown, though. However long it takes for that blade, next location is however fast it actually is. Right? That's fair, right? He can't just throw his blade all the way around the world. He would just teleport there at light speed. I mean, if he could throw it that far, I guess he could, though, with raw speed, right? There's these mechs in the game where he can dodge it. There's this ability you hold down the LB button and he can phase. 
he can literally dodge something that's literally an actual laser. Meaning that off gate, he can pretty much react at light speed or one could say 186,000 miles per second. I mean, think about it. I don't even want to get to this guy yet in the video, but he can react to people that have warp strikes similar to him, like Arden, for example, who has the warp strike ability as well. He can react to people that can do the same techniques. Not to mention that he should be as quick as his teammates or faster who can react to his own warp strike in training. I mean, what would be the point of training with his teammates like Gladios and Ignis and stuff like that and even Prompto if they could not react to his warp strike in actual battle or training sessions, right? And they clearly can. Gladios, for example, can as well. Throughout the game, he gets new techniques in the process. He gets to the point where he can like swap in between his weapons in his arsenal in mid combo. Like he can be like X hit here, sword slash here, shield here, like instantaneously, like swapping through his magic satchel of different weapons very fast and fluidly. They call it the Armiger. He has techniques like the Royal Cleave, the Dynasty Stance, moves like Apocalypse. Get to see how it looks in training sessions. Can attack at ridiculously fast speed. You see him blinking in and out, like switching between weapons in the process, like that type of attacks. Storm just has a wide array of it. Like you can just assault you blitz style. You can shoot the weapons at you like projectile flurry. Like not only can he switch between combos, he can shoot the weapons at you like Gatling gun. Like imagine a whole bunch of swords, axes, and stuff coming at you like a Gatling gun. At blinding warp levels of speed or even the speed of light. Just think about that for a second. He can chain the combos together to do more. Just give you an idea of how he attacks. He can really do this mid-air. Kind of like levitate, one could say. When he unleashes the arm maker. When it's fully unleashed. I don't want to forget the fact that, yeah, that's how that looks. By the way. Booyah. Legacy of Lucy. Similar to other Final Fantasy games, he has this ability known as Summon. Throughout the game, he got stronger, getting the gods' blessings. They call them the Astrials. Some of them might sound familiar, like Bahamut. Of course, this is a different universe than the other Final Fantasies, of course. But, you know, they, they're they reoccurring themes, right? This is important because he can actually fight these same summons that help him in battle. Then you're probably wondering, if he's this strong, why does he even bother summon if he's already this strong or getting close to their levels of strength at the end of the game? Well, that's the thing. Imagine having you in battle and then middle to summon another you in battle. Even though you're still strong, if you got the chance to summon another you, it would still be a helping asset in the battle because that's double the force. And imagine being able to summon three yous or five use even though they're the same strength as you that's still a helpful benefactor it's not like you're oh, always summoning them that means they're stronger no maybe at the very beginning of the game he wasn't on the god's power but like at the end of the game you'll see Look at the area of effect these Titans can attack with, the amount of power that the Titan can attack with. A mountain-sized thing. Yeah. I'm probably thinking, why the heck am I bringing this for Noctis? That's the summons feat. But is it, though? <laughs> Keep in mind, this is still nowhere near his prime in the game, by the way. Or a mountain-sized titan tried to literally crush Noctis. He deflected his, or parried his attack, made it his foot go backwards after he tried to stomp him, guys. If that doesn't give you an awesome benchmark on where Noctis' power ranges, I don't know what will. This is the bare bones, him being mountain levels of energy produced. He did it more than freaking once, but in this occasion, he wasn't strong enough. He had to get saved by his teammate. And his friends can produce energy to be able to stop attacks from him as well, like Gladios. Do you see these strikes he's deflecting? It is literally consistent. And the best way to get an idea of the Titan's power is the freaking meteor that he freaking caught. This same Titan caught a meteor. Another feat for Noctis to be able to clash with his blows. Got overpowered still, but I can't say this enough. This is him at his weekends. He's blocking these crushing blows from this ridiculously mountain-sized Titan. That's a guy. He's a, basically a deity of this verse. To add more fuel to the fire, working together with his team, they was actually able to damage this Titan really bad to where his piece of his arm came off. Archim caught it, for the Archim caught it, for the Archim caught it, for the Archim caught it, 
holding the thing up. Guess he never misses leg day. Or any day for that matter. Dialogue for lore on how the Titan guy is. It's deity. You gotta keep in mind that the meteor looks like it's about the size of this Titan. At the same time, you gotta also put in consideration that it, when it fell, it came down with extra energy from a war in its way. It's like mass plus his velocity equals more power the Titan had to produce to be able to match it or hold it. He's even held it in his sleep. Of course, you know, Noctis ends up forming a covenant with this Titan and ends up being cool with this Titan. So based on that already, Noctis should technically, with his royal arm in hand, being able to swipe enough power to slice the city have based on Perry Mountain size being like this, the Titan. You know what I mean? Not to mention that most beings, me and you included, should be able to hit harder than what their weight is. I mean, Titan more than likely can hit harder than how much he weighs, right? That's evident in him catching that meteor, right? Too much evidence of that, right? The pause screens for the loading screens of the game in general shows a lot of lore and stuff. This is very helpful. You get the little Noctis right here. Is the 114th in the line of Lucis, an heir apparent to the royal throne. Chosen by the crystal, which is going to get the power of later on in his vid. Later on in the game, of course, to become the king of light and stuff like that. Serve as the vessel for its power and savior for the scourge of this planet. They call it the star, of course. You can also summon this being known as, don't know if I'm saying his name right, Rama, god of the storm. He does the judgment bolt that has some decent area of effect. And he can create thunderstorms, which should concrete him being at least in them city shattering levels as well. Trust me, guys. Knowing the powers of these summons are more important than you think. Bear with me for a second. You gotta respect the area of effect. In the process of trying to get a pack with all these cool creatures, some of them were being stubborn and some of them had to get a little bit more convincing than the others, so he had to actually fight them. This kind of proves that he can hang on par with the actual summons that he do summon. The Leviathan, for example, which is the goddess of the sea. If we were to take that seriously as being actually the goddess of the actual entire sea, to be able to move the entire sea, that would be extremely massive for Noctis, meaning he can match something that can control all the water in the actual sea. But even if we say it can't control all the water and actual sea at the same time, which is a lot of mass, by the way. Check out what Leviathan can do to all this water surrounding this entire city, just controlling all of that ocean. Able to parry multiple attacks from the Leviathan summit itself. See the parries? Respect it. That kind of power. Like, you get another angle of how much water Leviathan actually is controlling by looking at the buildings next to it, parts of the cities floating, things like that. Knocked us near his best or getting near his best was like, you see how he's able to pretty much fly, fight on par with it, combo style, switching between weapons in the middle of the combo. This is the type of power. Able to do severe harm to Leviathan, chopping a piece of it off, causing it severe pain, showing the level he's on legitly. Chopping pieces of its limbs off, guys. Letting you know that it's on that level. I'm not saying it's concretely set in stone that it can control all the water in the entire planet, but it definitely does seem like it probably could. If that is the case, that would easily make him in the continental ranges because there's only two major continents in this world anyway, right? Which would mean Nocta would be able to produce over 700 teratons of force to be able to match the Leviathan, harm it severely, cut pieces of it off, pretty much tame it, and then get cool with it and summon that creature. At his beck and call. Not to mention you got astrals or deities like Ifrit in the Final Fantasy lore that should be compared to the Leviathan in raw power and durability, things like that. Ifrit in the past Final Fantasy games, which is a totally different continuity, so you shouldn't be able to scale that Ifrit with this Ifrit because you know how Final Fantasy is. There's reoccurring things in other universes that pop up in other universes. Like in Final Fantasy VII, Ifrit exists in Final Fantasy VII, but this is Final Fantasy XV. Those are two different Ifrits. So, of course, I can't judge this Ifrit based on the lore of the Final Fantasy VII Ifrit, but it's something to consider because it is by the still same people known as Final Fantasy. It's something to think about. You know, the Ifrit in the past, Final Fantasies could end the lore to be able to turn the world into ash. But like I said, this is a separate continuity, evidently. 
But it's something to consider that the Final Fantasy multiverse has shown what these type of summons could do in other universes. You know, just something to put in your head. Yeah, I'm not taking that too seriously because it's a different universe. But what is canon is Leviathan being the goddess of the sea, being able to control this much water, a body of water in the middle of the fight to be able to mess up Atlas. Noctis was breaking limbs off of it. You know, stuff like that. Not to mention that Noctis has actually fought Ifrit with the help of his summon, of course, harm him very badly. So that he's on that level as well. During a time skip, a 10 year time skip after soaking in the crystal and getting like another major power up. He soaked in the crystal to get a power up for 10 years. Yeah, don't ask. And he's way stronger than he was previously. Obviously, right? You get an idea of the team's power, literally fighting Ifrit, the actual astral deity, working together. His teammates can hold their weight, but of course Noctis does the major blow that harms him very bad. He was corrupted, for those that are curious. You know you're destined for greatness when even as a kid, the gods were always watching over you, even if you didn't know they were deities. Like Gintiana called herself the messenger when she was actually Shiva the entire time. Another being that's comparable to Ifrit, obviously, because they was in a war together. Oh, let me get to that real quick. It was like an astral war. It's a war surge as Solheim fends off the pyre burner's fire. When the smoke clears, the world of man is in ruins. Their star left scarred for time eternal. It's easy to take stuff like this out of context, but the war between the Astros, including that being known as Titan, Leviathan, the god Rama, Ifrit, and even Shiva, the world was in ruins after this war. Stuff like that. It could be little slight evidence of multi-continental or continental country shattering levels of power these guys can produce. Putting all that war stuff to a side, Shiva also proves she's on the level of Ifrit. She was a helpful aid in like pretty much subduing Ifrit in this occasion as well. I almost forgot to mention he has this ring of Lucy, which has some epic abilities to be able to like drain an opponent, give himself health back, and unleash a ridiculous area of effect, battlefield removal type of stuff, sucking the villains into like a void. Only the chosen one can wear this. Yes, Noctis has broken abilities with this ring to be able to like seal things away in a freaking, freaking ridiculous. Ain't that freaking insane. There's going to be some people that's not convinced that he has surpassed the deities. When he, at the very end of the game, he became the king of light and his power is confirmed to be far past the deities, including the ridiculous being that he parried his attacks from at the beginning of the game, known as Titan. Hard to believe that he surpassed all these ridiculous beings, but yet he did in the lore. Once the sacred ring is replete with power, the true king will complete his ascension. Only then can he banish the blight upon our star. You heard it from them, not me. They had a lot of adventures going on with different bosses in their adventures, working together. Not really going all of them in detail because some of them didn't really have nothing noticeable to say, but yeah, you get the idea. There's even a possible multiply you can think of when it comes to Noctis, when it comes to these royal arms unleashed and things like that, because he did eventually get empowered by all of the 13 prior kings, including beings like his dad who should be at similar power to the point where they should be able to parry at least one attack from Titan. Mountain level times what? Times 13 or Noctis at the beginning of the game with one royal arm versus at the end of the game having all 13 plus the different ring of Lucid. Like he had a drastic power, right? So think of it like this. With all 13 and his powers of his ancestors into one, right? Because he can switch between all his weapons at once. Attack with all that power at once, right? You got what it takes to face your ancestors and convince them to lend you their strength, their strength, their strength. Got a long road ahead. Can you see this through to the end? He stated, lend you their strength. These weapons, royal arms. Yeah. That's where I get the notion that it's a good chance he got a 13 times power up. So if you want a low ball without counting the meteor's kinetic energy, just say that that Titan is mountain level. Mountain level times 13, right? That's what Noctis should be being the king of light bare bones minimum now now if we're talking about the kinetic energy of that meteor 
we're talking about possibly country levels. And if you want to say base Noctis is country ish ranges could shatter United States in half or slice United States in half. If you're saying that, then if you can say shattering United States in half levels of cutting power or striking power times 13, you know, that's a way you can look at it as well. The more you analyze it, the more you think about it, the more you start thinking about him being close to those planetary ranges or even moon ranges, the more you start thinking about, oh man, what if that Ifri theory about him being able to turn the water into ashes applies to Noctis? It's the type of stuff that makes you start thinking about. Now, to mention when it comes to raw speed with his little warp ability, throw his dagger, it just warps wherever his dagger throws, kind of like reminds you of the teleporting ability from Naruto to be able to like teleport wherever you throw the shuriken. You know, that's what Noctis reminds me of, right? Being able to interact to people like Arden that can do similar attacks, things like that, even overpower beings like Arden. This guy, who should also be up there with the deities, or even debatably surpassed them based on how much he gave Noctis a run for the money. Noctis pretty much did something that even the summons couldn't do, becoming the King of Light. Being able to take on Arden, who was truly immortal, he destroyed Arden's soul, literally destroyed an immortal person, because his power surpassed that of the deities. Noctis should be able to produce way of the excess of over 7 million megatons of force or TNT way above that or even possibly 700 million megatons of force or TNT depending on how you look at it with the battle with Leviathan things like that overpowering all of them being the king of light stuff like that there's also a crucial detail you got to remember at the very end of the game Noctis even surpassed his dad this is important because the dad was extremely powerful in his own right because his dad actually fought that being known as Arden. Arden in his own right is the top tier of the verse, can take on multiple royal guards back in his time. Just easily a super duper top tier of the verse. Arden is strong enough himself to like literally corrupt. He had the power to turn people into demons in his universe. He did this to Ifrit, an actual literal deity. Why are you here? Why for you? The royal arms. Who are you? Adagium. Here to bring the bloodline of Lucis to an end. Not only was Noctis able to beat a better version of Arden, who fought his own dad, he fought like an immortal Arden and actually won. So to let you know, Noctis even surpassed his dad. His dad can hang with like top tiers of the verse, like this. Post your comments down below. Let me know what y'all think. Do you think he's a planet buster easily because of the scaling with Ifrit in the Final Fantasy multiverse lore? Just from the different universes of Ifrit being that powerful, do you think this Ifrit automatically is an is a being that can burn the world to ashes just because of the other universes can do that as well? What do you guys think? Post your comments down below. Let me know what y'all think. Is there a really cool measurable feat that I didn't get to mention? I might add it later if you can point it out. And it's really nice and measurable, not too much wonkiness, right? We try not to be too wonky when it comes to the scaling and things like that and finding out how strong characters are from the opponents they fight because finding out how strong a character from the opponents they fight is important but i don't want to go overboard too much how strong do you think noctis is how strong do you think the people or the summons in his verse is do you think it's not fair to scale him to those summons in raw power what do you guys think post your comments down below let me know what you all think one thing is for certain however you look at it respect noctis final fantasy 15 <laughs>